COVID-19 is still among us. What have we learned to do is manage the infection rate while trying to get back to normal. We appeal to you to continue following the protocols. Sanitize, wash hands frequently, social distance, and wear your mask. Prevention is certainly better than treatment. This is Jamaica Magazine, and I'm Adrian Atkinson. The show begins right now. Concerned about uncollected garbage at home? Do you see garbage piling up on the streets? Then report it. Use the National Solid Waste Management Authority's mobile app to report instances of littering, illegal dumping, and uncollected garbage. From anywhere and at any time, be an environment warden by informing the authority of unsightly solid waste. You will be notified when your report has been received by the NSWMA as well as when the matter is resolved. Download the app from the iOS or Android app stores by typing in NSWMA. Play your part as Jamaica's beauty is everybody's duty. Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, July 13. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the island is on a trajectory for growth. This, he says, can be attributed to Jamaica resolving the fiscal management of its economic affairs. According to the Prime Minister, the country is on a good course after successfully completing several IMF programs which have entrenched fiscal stability and prudence. We are creating the environment, uh, regulatory and otherwise, to become uh, a country that is growing significantly in this region. Uh, we are also tackling other institutional and development issues, such as strengthening our bureaucracy to deal with things such as corruption, but at the same time to become more efficient. Uh, we are also investing heavily, and I'm very proud of this, in our security, our national security, uh, both in terms of our defense force and our police. And we are improving our policing capabilities, and that has been a, a challenge for, for many years. Prime Minister Holness also revealed that the government will be rolling out some transformational policies for the education sector in the coming months. He was speaking on Good Day New York on Fox 5 earlier today. During his interview, the Prime Minister gave an update on the island's COVID-19 management to include compliance, the vaccination program and the protocols for visiting Jamaica. The Rural Development Ministry will be spending $350 million to fix parochial roads across the country. The rural roads, identified in several parishes, are to be upgraded by March 2022. Portfolio Minister Desmond Mackenzie made the disclosure recently. He was speaking at the official handover of Guava Walk Road in Somerset, Manchester. It was part of an island-wide $100 million road improvement project. What I'm seeing this morning is value for money. This $5 million that was used, to undertake the repairs has gone a far way to improve the quality of life in the community. Continuing on infrastructure development, the Adelphi Police Station in St. James has been rehabilitated at a cost of $47.3 million. Infrastructural support was provided through the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF's Poverty Reduction Program, with grant funding from the European Union. The upgraded station now boasts a criminal investigation branch, three administration offices, a female dormitory and restrooms. In addition, comprehensive rehabilitation work was done to the main lobby, barracks and kitchen areas. Speaking at the official opening on Friday, National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang said it was part of ongoing investments by the government to enhance the effectiveness and efficiency of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the JCF. The rehabilitation station is a part of the commitment of the government and the work of the commissioner and the entire agency to reposition the constabulary force and to ensure they are provided the kind of facilities that they can work in with a level of comfort but also receive community members who seek to deal with the police in an area that is, would say, in customer service term, user friendly and is also fit for purpose. The purpose of this is really to deliver service to the community. The community should feel compelled free to come to us for not just policing matters but for, the, for concerns. 
The Adelphi Police Station serves approximately 15,000 residents within the community and adjoining ones. Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang is encouraging service organizations and the private sector to partner with the government by aligning their projects with its social investments in downtown Kingston communities. Minister Chang says a socio-demographic survey conducted by his ministry will be made available to service organizations. It points to 125 vulnerable communities in the downtown Kingston area in which government will be implementing social investments. The capabilities, ideas and various expertise that reside within the private sector and the network of Rotary Clubs across the island are crucial to the successful transformation of these communities. Social transformation requires we work together to improve and bring about these meaningful long-term change to health, social services, educational and infrastructure needed in the communities. This partnership is critical to achieving the degree of social transformation that is required across the entire Southern Crescent in the corporate area. Minister Chang was speaking on Saturday at the installation ceremony for the incoming 2021-2022 President and Board of Directors of the Rotary Club of Downtown Kingston. The National Security Minister says Downtown Kingston is one of the country's largest commercial districts and has been at a disadvantage because of criminal acts occurring in the surrounding communities. Against this backdrop, Dr. Chang says his ministry is redirecting social initiatives in the areas that are deemed challenging. Plans are in the works to move the draft national housing policy to a white paper in the 2021-2022 fiscal year. Portfolio Minister Pernell Charles Junis says the policy, which was approved in 2019 as a green paper, will see the integrated and sustainable development of housing across Jamaica. The policy will also promote a wide range of choices for Jamaicans to be able to access financing and housing solutions. We want to foster partnerships with the private sector. We want to look on all modalities that will allow for us to provide efficient developments. We want to rationalize the roles of the public sector agencies so that we can increase efficiency and reduce waste. We want to look on what we are using to build. Minister Charles was speaking recently as he opened a model unit for the Housing Agency of Jamaica's Catherine Estates Housing Development at Bernard Lodge in St. Catherine. The 1,650-unit development will be delivered in batches of 150, with houses starting at $6 million. And finally, the Ministry of Justice says it's working to meet targeted sensitization and training sessions under its Restorative Justice Unit. By the end of March next year, the Ministry hopes to complete 1,280 sensitization sessions, benefiting approximately 14,080 persons, and train 750 officers at the Department of Correctional Services. The Ministry says this is part of efforts to strengthen the delivery of restorative justice services to more Jamaicans. Speaking with JIS News, Restorative Justice Coordinator Andrean Lindsay says facilitators are also being prepared to lead conferences involving offenders, victims, families and friends of the parties involved in the conflict, as well as community members. She also says during the sessions, participants will address the conflict and its consequences and decide how best to repair the harm. The unit is expected to complete 3,200 restorative justice conferences during this fiscal year. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching. I am Delroy Chuck, Minister of Justice, and with the support of the European Union, we intend to build a first-class justice system. The contribution of the European Union to the Jamaica justice system is enormous. We believe that this partnership with the European Union has been beneficial to Jamaica, and we hope that further assessment will demonstrate that the partnership between the European Union and Jamaica is one that has not only been game-changing, but will continue in the years ahead. The most significant achievement, in my opinion, was the Court of Appeal. Before the Court of Appeal was rebuilt, only seven judges could have been appointed. Now we can appoint 12 judges plus the president of the court and this will ensure 
that at that level in the Court of Appeal, cases will move expeditiously. It will set the tone for how we engage in backlog reduction. Coming up, the latest happenings at the Office of the Prime Minister. Prime Minister condemns assassination of Haitian president, breaks ground for Bustamante Children's Hospital upgrade, and discloses $803 million preliminary bill for damage caused by Hurricane Elsa. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Vaughn Davis. Regarding the cost to clear and clean roadways and drains of silt and debris, the preliminary cost has been put at 443 million Jamaican dollars. Another 360 million will be required to make affected corridors accessible. We are therefore looking at a total cost of approximately $803 million. Prime Minister Andrew Holness giving an update on the effects of Hurricane Elsa on the island. The system affected the island on July 3 and 4, dumping about 8 inches of rain across several parishes, with Clarendon and St. Catherine being hardest hit. 177 roads, mainly in St. Anne, St. Mary, Portland and St. Catherine were impacted by the storm. The National Works Agency, NWA, will be carrying out the repair works over the next two weeks. In the meantime, members of Parliament were given 21 days to complete the first phase of a $100 million hurricane program in their constituencies. Meaning that if you have drains in your constituency, select the most critical ones that impact the greatest number of persons and have those drains cleaned early. Mr. Holness says he will have further discussions with the NWA to make more funds available. He's also calling for greater preparation for the Atlantic hurricane season, pointing out that the period is already ahead of the storms predicted. I therefore want to emphasize to ADPEM and all the ministries and agencies responsible for coordinating our disaster risk management to maintain a state of readiness for any eventuality. I take this opportunity also to urge all Jamaicans to undertake their preparations for the hurricane season if they have not already done so. Prime Minister Andrew Holness reacted with shock and condemnation upon hearing of the assassination of Haitian President Jovenel Moyes in Port-au-Prince on Wednesday. We wish for the people of Haiti peace and stability at this time. We continue to monitor the situation and to gather as much information as we can. The Caribbean community agreed to fly all flags at half-mast to pay tribute to member country Haiti. On Wednesday, the Prime Minister joined the Minister of Health and Wellness to break ground for a $120 million upgrade of the Bustamante Hospital for Children. The multi-purpose building will house a pediatric cardiac ward and overnight parent suite. The project is being undertaken by the National Housing Trust, the National Health Fund and the Southeast Regional Health Authority. It's part of a master redevelopment plan for the hospital, which includes the addition of 100 beds to the institution. The development and implementation of this new master plan continues to revitalize and improve an existing hospital infrastructure, which over time has been significantly upgraded. Mr. Holness also opened a new drug serve powered pharmacy at the hospital. The $70 million facility was developed by the National Health Fund. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the long-awaited report into the strategic review of the National Housing Trust will be debated in the House of Representatives shortly. The report was completed in 2017 and tabled in Parliament shortly after. It is aimed at determining necessary reforms to be implemented at the agency to deliver its core mandate of providing houses to Jamaicans. It's really should have been debated long ago, but it is the kind of debate that requires the dedicated attention of the parliamentary agenda and we're just trying to find that slot within the parliamentary agenda where we can debate that report. By Friday, the Prime Minister was on Spanish Town Road breaking ground for the headquarters of IMCA Jamaica. 
The 8 million US dollar project is being done in partnership with Cygnus Group and is expected to employ 200 persons during the construction phase. Once completed, 82 persons will have permanent jobs. Minister Holness used the occasion to urge greater investment along the Spanish Town Road corridor. Put together more deals, more transactions, get these properties that are just laying there, some giving cover for criminals, others becoming dump sites, and others just sitting down there rusting and rotting away. Let's get all those idle properties into meaningful economic activity. I am cautiously optimistic that growth could trend towards the top end of the forecast range, given the higher than anticipated pace of our inoculations, our vaccination, the anticipated release of pent-up vacation demand and the impact of the significant fiscal uh, and monetary stimulus in the United States. Prime Minister Andrew Holness's confidence comes as the country continues to see an increase in visitor arrivals in recent months. Growth is also being recorded in the construction, mining and quarrying sectors. Projections are that the economy will grow between 7 and 9% for the April to June quarter of 2021 and by 4 to 8% for the 2021-2022 fiscal year. Back at Jamaica House Tuesday, the Prime Minister welcomed British parliamentarian Alok Sharma. Mr. Sharma is currently serving as the President of the United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP26. The conference will be held in Glasgow, Scotland from October 31 to November 12. Minister Without Portfolio Everald Warmington was also on the road, travelling to Westmoreland to view projects in the area. He says over $235 million will be spent on roads in the parish. $75 million will go towards the retreat to Marchmont Roadway. Golden River to Glasgow will receive $65.46 million of those funds, and $20 million will be spent to construct a box culvert for the Shrewsbury to Logwood Bridge. You asked me about Shrewsbury to Longwood, there's an estimate for $85 million. We are allocating $45 million to that project. You asked us for Welcome Porters Mountain, that project estimated to $85 million. We are allocating $30 million to the road going into Welcome. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Be sure to join us next time for more of the news stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Encourage those around you who have not gotten their vaccine uh, to get it. We all need to be protected for each of us to feel protected. It's a one for all, all for one type of scenario. Don't use the side effects to discourage others. Because I've had the vaccine myself. It is, it is your body building the protection against the virus. And so interpret the side effects as a positive thing. Don't use the side effects to not take the second dose. To achieve the full protection, you need the second dose. Tropical Storm Hugo has been upgraded to a hurricane and is expected to impact Jamaica. A hurricane warning is now in effect. Wait! Get in one you know, make your heart. Did you know there are a few steps that have to be taken before a hurricane advisory is issued? Once a tropical cyclone has formed in the Atlantic or the Caribbean, the Met Service monitors it and puts plans in place in the likelihood that the system will affect Jamaica. Hugo. 
we required additional staff in, especially for the These include increasing the number of technical staff working at the National Meteorological Center and the number of upper air observations daily and ensuring that the weather and technical equipment in the office are fully functional. They are in constant dialogue with the National Hurricane Center in the United States, which provides regular updates on the system. Once the Met Service does an assessment and determines that the system is a threat to Jamaica, the following will unfold. Yes, Prime Minister Holness. Yes, Evan Thompson here from the Met Service. I'm really just calling to, to update you on the situation with Hurricane Hugo. It continues to move closer to the island and so we believe that it, it will be necessary for us to move to that hurricane warning. Um, so we're just making sure that we have your approval. Then... Hello, yes, hurricane specialist, please. Hi, how are you doing? Evan here again from Jamaica. Right, I have just spoken with the Prime Minister. He's in agreement that we go to the hurricane warning by 5 o'clock this evening. That's correct. The National Hurricane Center publicizes this information internationally and the Met Service prepares and sends bulletins to the local media. And that is how we get here. A hurricane warning is now in effect for the island. And as the country prepares for the weather system, the Met Service continues to play a critical role in the country's disaster readiness, providing information to the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management and the local government ministry. These entities use this information to determine which areas on the island should be evacuated and where shelters should be opened. That's not all. The Met Service also works closely with the Coast Guard to evacuate fishermen at sea, on the keys and banks, before the storm hits. That is how the Met Service keeps Jamaicans in the know so that they can better prepare for any severe weather system. We Jamaicans are a hard-working set of people and we at the JIS know this. That's why after a hard day's work, you can simply pop onto our website, jis.gov.jm and be in the know with government news and information. JIS, your information hub. The ministries of tourism and agriculture have joined forces to help those in their sectors access financial and technical support. Farmers and tourism stakeholders impacted by COVID-19 have received assistance through an initiative of the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF. Next, ready to the rescue. Now that we get these things to put in place, it's a good thing, so we are going to put them in place so we can get to open. Since 2009, the government of Jamaica has formed a critical partnership between agriculture and tourism. And that partnership led to a World Bank Finance Program, as you heard before, that was known or is known as Ready Rural Economic Development Initiative. And the Ready One program, which ended in 2017, um, ended with such success and momentum that uh, the government saw it necessary to have a phase two. Uh, the phase two, of course, was approved um, late 2019. And um, despite our best laid plans, COVID came along and put not a stop, but um, made us change our perspective on a few things. This program through Ready2 uh, will invest $52.4 million to support the base of the pyramid. Persons, enterprises, micro enterprises, and that means small farmers, small community tourism enterprises, at the base of the pyramid that provide such a critical um, role when it comes to the supply chain. We will provide under this investment um, medical grade PPE, right, which will include masks, face shields, sanitizers, and all the necessary things that would be needed to apply um, the protocols required for, for small tourism enterprises. We will also provide to our registered farmers seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides, and harvesting crates. We will also provide 60 
training of 60 COVID-19 safety point persons, 30 for tourism and 30 for agriculture. This project seeks to combat some of the challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic impacting the livelihoods of many of our farmers and persons in rural Jamaica. This program underscores that the government of Jamaica is serious about providing for our rural entrepreneurs. That's what our farmers are. They are rural entrepreneurs and we are working with them to ensure that they can maintain their production numbers, sustain their farms and partake in climate smart agriculture and more importantly strengthen the linkages between agriculture and tourism. This exercise that we're involved in now, with Ready2, is seeking to do, is to build our capacity to respond to the disruptions that the pandemic will cause. And not only to respond, but to manage, to recover, and to thrive. How do you enable the farmers to produce under COVID without getting COVID. And, and, that's, and that's the essence of the capacity building exercise that we're talking about here. Collecting this today, I can say I'm very appreciative because it can help with them having meetings. Most of us usually sell to middlemen who supply to um, the hotel, but we are having um, our housewives coming in, restaurants coming in, and supermarkets coming in. We still have a few middlemen that buy from us there still. We feel good because with JSF and Ready2 and um, TPD, we know that they're putting out the effort and we've been with JSF um, from Ready1 like we were um, engrafted in. And we have been to several um, meetings with them and they trained our staff in tour guiding mm -hmm. and um, other, other aspects of things, a lot of training. So Joseph has been doing a good work. This will help us to maintain the COVID-19 protocol. protocol that we are supposed to be practicing to ensure that our products are marketable in a safe environment. We have single parents on the farm, we have persons who are unemployed other than the farm thing, so I know that the Ready2 is going to benefit them very greatly. Persons are aware of COVID-19, but some of them are not taking it real serious, so having these on the farm with us, I know that, you know, they will use it and use it to the best of their abil ability to prevent COVID. Farmers will be trained in COVID-19 health and safety protocols, but also a number of the farmers will receive comprehensive training in their specialized area. Ladies and gentlemen, we have seen that when you provide technical support to our farmers, our farmers do well. Our farmers are willing to modernize their operations, but they need the support. We're all doing this to ensure the agriculture sector continues to grow. You've reached the final page of Jamaica Magazine. Thank you so much for being with us on today's journey. Another Jamaica Magazine on foes tomorrow, so come back same time on this same station. Until then, go to our website, YouTube channel, and social media pages for more informative features. While there, you can subscribe to our pages and channels so you can stay in the know. I'm Adrian Atkinson, reminding you to follow the COVID-19 protocols. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.